Hey everybody, it's Amrita Karana with the Falcon Group at Keller Williams. I am here to talk to you about a very, very popular um, coffee topic that comes up every time I have coffee with anyone. And it is about the current uh, real estate market and the overpaying for homes. So I understand that the perception of, you know, the general population is that a home is listed for, you know, $500,000. I pay more than that asking price. Therefore, I overpaid by $50,000. Let's just say in this example. So I bought a house for five fifty dollars when it was really listed for five hundred. dollars Therefore, I'm overpaying by $50,000, right? And that math makes sense and all that, all that, right? But I would like to change your perspective a little bit and just shed light on maybe the marketing strategy, the pricing strategy that's going into play. So every time a home is listed, there's multiple prices. There's a list price, there's the sale price, right? And then there's negotiations on inspections that may come about. So when a home is listed for a price, do you for a fact know is it under listed or it or is it listed right at market value is it listed below market value is it listed above market value i think that is a key thing to understand for you to be able to then say oh hey i overpaid for a home or i paid more than what it's really worth okay so that's my first um note for you to think about um that the home could have been listed for under market value by $25,000 only to drive, you know, this multiple offer situation to then see if it's going to go over by 25, 30, 40, 50, right? So in that example I gave you, if a price, if a home was priced, let's say 25 below, the home is market value is 525. We listed it for 500 and we're going to see what it comes in at and what we can get it sold at. And it sells at 550 at that point you could arguably say that, okay, well, the market value is 525, I paid 550 for it. So you pay $25,000 over what the market value is. Now, my second point here is the market value um, is determined by multiple factors. Um, the home is always worth what a buyer is willing to pay. I always tell all my sellers that when they ask me, what do you think my home is worth? And I could say, okay, well, based on data, this is where I think it's worth, you know, based on the statistics and what I see, but really it's gonna be worth what a buyer is willing to pay for it. That's what your home is worth. Now, with that said, anytime there's a sale that happens, there's an appraisal that happens and that's a cash deal. But let's say there's an appraisal. An appraiser is going to come in and assess from a bank's perspective, how much is this property worth? Because the bank is gonna say, well, Mr. Buyer, I'm lending you 80% of the loan, right? Of the purchase price. You're gonna put down 20%, but I'm gonna lend you 80%. So I need to know this home is worth at least that amount, if not over, right? So normally when you get an appraisal done, it's an outside company controlled by no one. You know, the lender doesn't have any control over who the, the appraisal company is. The realtors have no control over who the appraisal company is and who the appraiser is. Appraiser can come in, assess based on, you know, the current um, current homes that are under contract or the most recent solds. Sometimes they don't even take it into account current under contracts. They only look at solds in the last X number of months. So, and they compare apples to apples or try to at least. Now, in that scenario, if your appraisal comes in, let's say you bought it for 550, right? Same example. Home was listed for 500 because it was underlisted by let's say $25,000 to drive a little um, more intense demand. It may be market value is 525. You purchased it for 550, right? And the appraisal comes in at 550. What is that home worth? It appraised at 550. According to the appraisal, it's worth 550. So did you actually overpay for it? No, not necessarily. You didn't overpay for it. Did you buy it at a, um, a peak of a height? Yes, there's no doubt about that. There's no bullshitting that. 
you bought it on an incline of a peak, right? When the when there's pent up demand and low inventory. Um, so I just wanted to make you aware of these two things. If you purchase a property for 550 when it was priced at 500 and the appraisal came in at 525 or came in at 500, then yes, you 100% are now overpaying based on the appraisal value of the property, which is some people still choose to do that. Given the current environment, they'll say, you know what, I don't care. I'll bring that cost out of pocket. I still want to close on this. And you know, there's people who leave the appraisal contingency in place to protect them in those scenarios where appraisal doesn't match the sale price, therefore you renegotiate the deal. And that happens all the time as well. But I think it's very important to keep in mind when you purchase a property, was it priced right to begin with? Right on market value, above market value, or below market value? value. And then second, when the appraisal comes in, where did that appraisal come in? So don't get too wound up about you overpaid by $50,000 when the property appraised for that much, right? Um, in this scenario, it's like getting it appraised at a uh, sale price is kind of what's happening very consistently throughout. There are some cases where people are paying over that and it comes under appraisal. And that that's a, that's a personal decision you choose to make and that's okay too, you know, depending on your situation. But I felt like I needed to come on and talk about this because it's a really, um, it's one of the questions that keep coming up for me when I talk to people about real estate is about overpaying. You know, are people overpaying? And is there a bubble that's gonna pop? Um, so that was it. Uh, have a good one. Talk to you soon.